Hello and welcome to this tutorial. I'm going to answer a question that I receive a lot from the faculty that I work with, and that is, what's the difference between a margin and padding? If you're working in CSS, in Canvas, if you're using inline CSS, it seems like margins and paddings are kind of the same thing, and they can be used for the same purpose, but in this video I'm going to explain why they're different, and also how borders play a part in setting up content on our Canvas pages. So for this example, I'm going to start with the concept of a div. And if you've seen some of my other videos, then you might have a concept of what a div is. Essentially, a div is nothing until you put something in it. It's an empty box, it's shapeless, it's formless. But once you put something inside the div, then it espouses a shape and a size and a purpose. So in this case, I'm going to put a picture in the div. Here's my div, and the div has an image, and I have a source to the image. So I have a sleeping panda, a baby panda, and that is my div for now. Now let's put a margin around the sleeping panda. Here I've changed my code. Within the div itself, I've now put a style. The style is a margin of 20 pixels. Now the dotted dashed line around the panda represents the border. I don't actually have a border on the image, but by default there's a border. We just can't see it, and so to visualize it, I have a border, and so what we're seeing is that between the border of the image, or the element, and the other content that's on the page, there's a buffer of about 20 pixels, of, it, of precisely 20 pixels. Now padding is different than a margin because padding deals with the space in between the border and the image itself, or the element that you have. So in this code, I decided in addition to my margin of 20 pixels, I also want padding of 20 pixels. And so for the person on the website, they're going to see 40 pixels. 20 plus 20 is 40. But specifically, there's 20 pixels for the margin, and I just now put in 20 pixels for the padding. And that's the difference between padding and a margin. A padding gives space between the border and the picture, and margin gives space between the border and all of the other content that's on the page. Now another thing I can do is actually specify the properties of the border. So here I have an example for the style. I added some code, I put a border, and I put five pixels, a solid line, and red. Now the width and the color are optional, but the border style is required. In this case, I have solid, you can have dashed or dotted. And if you don't specify a color, then if there's text, then the border will just be the color of that text. Let's play around with the border properties just a little bit. So I'm going to change that up, and now instead of 5 pixels, I have some, a border that's 10 pixels, and it's dotted, and it is white. Let's change that up one more time, just for the sake of example. Here's a border that's 2 pixels, and it's dashed, and it's orange. So on Canvas, you would actually see that border, and you would see if there's space between the border and the element, or the text, the picture, whatever it is. And you'd also see if there's space between the border and the other content. So let's dive into Canvas and start applying this. Here I have a page that has a banner, a header up top, and I have some boilerplate text. Let's go ahead and edit this, and we're going to put in a picture. So I'll put the picture right at the front of the text here, and I'm just going to upload our baby panda friend. I'm going to put him at about 300 pixels, and I'll just mark it as decorative. And done. So just adding the picture, if I go ahead and save this page, you're going to notice that it doesn't look all that great. Okay, so it's flush against the left here, but then you'll notice all this space here, and the reason why is because this is all one line. The line has one image, and then it has some words, and that's the first line, and then the second line has the words, so the rest of this reads pretty well. So let me show you a CSS trick to help us out with this. I'm going to go into the HTML editor, and I'm going to find that image, so the image is right here, and I'm going to add a line of code. So I'm going to put style. Here's my code. Style equals float left. That means the image is just going to float on the page to the left of the text. And when I see that, then I can see, okay, there, now it's not one line. This, is, this picture is not actually on a line. It's just on the page floating, and everything is wrapping around the picture. Now I could put that as float right, and it'll be on the right side of the page which is what I do most of the time, to be honest. But what I don't like is that the words are right up flush against the picture, and that just looks really bad. It just needs a little bit of space. 
So let's play with that and let's put some space in there. So here's my image and here's the style that I have. Right now I'm floating it to the left and I'm gonna put in the other code from our previous example. Okay, just to review, I'm putting a border. This is gonna be that two pixel dashed orange border. I'm gonna put some padding in between the border and the picture of the panda. And then I have a margin, which is going to be 20 pixels. So it's gonna push everything away from the border by 20 pixels. And it's still gonna to float to the left. All right, I think that looks a lot better, to be honest, I think. Uh, so we have some padding between the border. We specified the border and then we have a margin. So it looks like a fun page coming together. But let me show you some other aspects of the CSS code. We're gonna get in here. Let me take away that border and the padding and the margin. All right, for let's start with this. Let's look at what is a margin of 20 pixels like. So margin of 20 pixels is good, I think. It puts some space between the words and the picture, but I don't really want the space on the left or even up above here. So what if we just put a margin to the right and to the bottom by 20 pixels, but leave the left and the top. And instead of margin 20 pixels all the way around, I'm gonna say, let's put um, 20 pixels to the right. And let's put some margin on the bottom, but I think 20 might be too much. Let's just try 10 right now. So we're gonna have zero on the left, zero on the top, 20 on the right, and then 10 on the bottom. Let's see what that looks like. So I think that was good. We're flush on the left and there's already a little bit of space between that header and the picture. So we didn't really need to push that 20 more pixels, but it gives us a plenty of space on the right and then a little bit of space to work with on the bottom. Just for the sake of practice, let's try one more thing. Let's add one more element. Um, I'll do a picture. We'll see what kind of things we have in the course. Here's a spinning panda just to keep it on theme. All right, so he's spinning. I'm going to make that also 300 pixels. Mark him decorative and click done. All right, so I'm going to find that other image. Here it is. Let's go ahead and float it to the right and put a margin on the left of 20 pixels and then a margin on the top and the bottom of 10 pixels. And here's our second picture. So to recap, we have one that's floating to the left, which means all the text is running up against it, but we're pushing that text 20 pixels to the right and 10 pixels to the bottom. The second picture, we're floating it on the right and all of the text is running up, but we're pushing it 10 pixels or 20 pixels to the left. And then it looks like we didn't really need it, but we have 10 pixels on the top and 10 pixels on the bottom. You can add margins, paddings, and borders to text boxes, to headers, pictures, really to any element. So play around with the various properties, get a test page, and see if you can explore these options. I hope you appreciate this tutorial and I would love to see you again. Go ahead and subscribe and click the bell to receive notifications so we can continue exploring Canvas together. I'll have a supplementary blog post that covers all of this content with the link in the description below. And of course, follow How to Canvas on our social media channels and outlets. And I'm gonna leave it up to you if what you've discovered here you want to share with your colleagues or if you just want to amaze your students and your colleagues with your prowess. It's totally up to you and I won't tell and I won't judge if you wanna keep it to yourself, but you know, feel free to share it as well. And everybody, Happy teaching and learning.